Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Hello, thank you for joining me today. You are listening to or watching Deeper, your daily Bible study. And I look forward to studying with you our topic today, which is titled Memory and Song. Our focus this week is living by the Word of God. And uh, two of the uh, ways that we can do that on a daily basis is to memorize the Bible and also to put it into song. And so we'll be looking a little more closely at what the Bible says about that today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for sending us your word. And uh, you've told us in the Bible that uh, we should do all we can to memorize your word. And there are some important reasons for that. And we want to be able to do that, Lord. And so we pray that you would guide us today, lead us with your Holy Spirit as we study these things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, Moses is giving his part of his final address to the nation of Israel before his death. They were at the end of their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. They were just about to cross over the Jordan uh, to finally enter the promised land. And here is part of what Moses is telling the, the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Well, I'll start in verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. You know, God demands all of us. And we can either look at that as, oh, well, God is, you know, he's, he's unreasonable. How can he want all of me? Why not just a little bit? Or we can see it as God's loving plan for us, realizing that we won't be happy until we surrender all of our life to him. Moses goes on in verse 6, and he says, oh, I guess I need to finish that thought, friends. You know, we are promised that the only way we can be happy, the only way we will be fulfilled in our life is uh, if and when we totally dedicate ourselves to Jesus Christ. And so this is why the call is given, serve God with, you know, shall love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So there's a promise here. It's not just a command. There's a promise here as well. Now verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Well-known passage here in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we want to focus for just a moment on the importance of memorizing the Word of God. Notice that Moses says, These words which I teach thee this day shall be in thy heart. Now, of course, as Moses is writing this, uh, or is speaking this, uh, the Israelites didn't have the entire Word of God. They didn't probably even have access uh, to much of, of the writings of Moses. Um, we don't know exactly how all of those were preserved. Of course, they were written by that time in his life. But nonetheless, the point is that the Word of God, Moses wanted the Word of God to be in the people's heart to be in their mind rather than something that was just out there being told to them by other people or, or written down on a scroll or a parchment. And of course, the lesson is for us today, isn't it? God wants His Word to be inside of us, to be living and dwelling within us, not just something that is in a book here or in an app here. As long as the Word of God remains external to us rather than written on our mind and our heart, uh, it cannot have the impact and that life-saving and life-changing power that God wants it to have in our lives. Therefore, the call, get the Word of God into your mind and your heart. How do you do that? Well, two of the most effective ways are by memorizing the Word of God and through song. And those are related as well. Uh, you no doubt have discovered that uh, the words, the lyrics to a song are very easily remembered. And uh, if you're like me, you can remember lyrics to songs that you learned years and years ago, decades ago perhaps. And uh, sometimes those are songs that we wish we could forget. You know, ah, that was a waste of time or that song's not so good. But it's stuck in the memory. Uh, I remember my wife's grandmother had Alzheimer's. And by the time I met her, she was pretty advanced in that, uh, that difficult journey. 
But even when she could not talk, could barely recognize people, when a piece of music came on that she recognized from 50, 60, 70 years earlier in her life, instantly she recognized it and she could even tell you, oh, this is the title of the song, this is who sang that song, and um, you know, here's the lyrics to the song. Incredibly powerful. The link here between music and the mind and the recall and the, the memory. And um, this is why memorizing scripture through song is one of you know, the powerful ways to do this, uh, to memorize the Word of God. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, so we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's look one last time at Deut- Deuteronomy chapter 6, because Moses again says that, um, verse 8, Thou shalt bind these words for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Here, Moses is really addressing the why, or the, the, the practical um, impact that memorizing the Word of God will have in our life. Another similar passage is Deuteronomy 11, verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these uh, words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between thine eyes. Uh, Here's the point. When we memorize the Word of God, God can then use that, that Word stored in us through His Holy Spirit to impact how we think, how we react to situations, Uh, our emotions, and then how we act. So, you know, the Word of God is the frontlet between our eyes. That's how I think about things. And the uh, bound, you know, on the hand or the wrist, that's how I react to things. And as the Word of God is stored within us, as we memorize it more and more, He can use that Word to really make a difference in our characters, how uh, how we react, what decisions we make day by day. And character really, is our decisions. A good character is the result of many good decisions, and a bad character is the result of many bad decisions in a person's life. Um, You know, the Bible gives us many reasons why we should memorize Scripture. We just mentioned one, because there's a link between what we're thinking about, what we're doing, and the characters that are formed in our lives. There are other reasons as well. Let's look at a few of those. 1 Peter chapter 3 Verse 15 and 16. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers that uh, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Here's the point. It's really in verse 15 that we should always be ready to give a reason for our faith, to explain the hope we have in Christ. Uh, Why are we looking forward to His return? We should always be prepared to uh, explain this to somebody else. And um, if you're like me, you have had situations, you you have had opportunities, and maybe in retrospect, immediately after it happens, this has happened to me more than once, I've gotten done with a conversation, uh, with somebody and realized, you know what, I should have said this, or that would have been the perfect opportunity to uh, bring up this spiritual point or to encourage somebody this way. And, uh, you know, praise God, He'll give us more opportunities as we ask for them. But we should always be ready to give an answer to somebody else about our hope in Christ. And as we memorize the Word of God, as we memorize Scripture, we are in a better position to do that. Another reason uh, to memorize Scripture is to encourage one another. Colossians 3, verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. There's that connection again between music and memorizing the word of God. But um, here we can encourage each other. We can admonish each other through these memorized passages that we have. Psalm 119, verse 11, maybe you have that one memorized. Um, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. One of the most important reasons to memorize the word of God is that he gives us a barrier uh, against the power of temptation so that when we are tempted, 
we can recall one of those promises of God, or maybe two or three of the promises of God, pray those rapidly and instantly, claim that promise, and God can give us power through that, that process as we do that. Um, one more reason that we'll look at today, Amos chapter 8, verse 11. You know, maybe you're thinking, well, why memorize? Uh, why should I memorize the Bible? You know, I've got lots of them on the shelf at home. I, I've got any version I want right here on my, smart, my smartphone. Why should I worry about memorizing the Word of God? And um, there we go. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Here is another reason why we should memorize as much of the Bible as we can, because the time may come, time will come, when you're not going to have your smart device with you. Or if you do, the battery may be dead. Um, or you may be out of service. Or you may be in a place where you don't have a printed Bible. What are you going to do in that kind of situation if you don't have uh, the Word of God in print and you don't have it in your mind? Well, you're going to be um, devoid of the Word of God. And that just may be a situation where you desperately need uh, to hear God's Word. Here in Amos, it's described as a famine and uh, a thirst for water, a famine of bread, just as we become desperate for physical food and nourishment, uh, spiritually, we can face the same thing, where we desperately need the Word of God, and if it's not stored within us, we may not have it. Those are just a few reasons that uh, memorization is important. There are many others that you can find in the Bible as well. But I wanted to finish today by just sharing a few simple ideas, uh, techniques that uh, you can use to memorize the Bible. And these are uh, things that have been helpful for me and my family as we have done our best to memorize more of Scripture. Uh, the first one is to simply write it out. Uh, I have found personally that um, writing out the word, you know, word for word, just writing out, transcribing it as I memorize it, maybe speaking it as well, that physical motion of writing out the verses is very helpful in uh, memorizing um, really whatever. I've done it in studying for school as well. And so writing it out can be helpful. Uh, kind of in a similar vein, walking or exercising uh, as you work on memorizing can be very, very helpful. When I was teaching uh, at uh, an academy, I was teaching a couple of Bible classes there, high school age students, and I would take the students on a walk around the campus as they had their Bible open trying to memorize uh, Scripture. And, uh, you know, several of them over time uh, told me, you know what, Mr. Rumsey, it really works. It's a lot easier to memorize as I'm walking. And so that physical movement as well can be helpful. You know, a lot of us spend a lot of time commuting and traveling back and forth uh, in your car probably. And that is a great time that um, shouldn't be wasted. You know, pop in an audio Bible or a recording of whatever it may be you're trying to memorize or learn at that time. We've already talked quite a bit today about music and the um, ability that has. That can be helpful as well. One last idea is a Bible memory box. Our family's using this right now. You just simply place index cards in that box. And uh, we have a card for each day of the week, uh, seven days of the week. We have a card for um, odd days, another card for even days. Uh, and then there's a daily card, and we can, we can change these out very easily. We've just printed these on index cards and laminated them. This is a great way to make sure that you are systematically going through the Bible verses that you're working on memorizing and that you don't forget some as well. It's a great way to review what you've already learned. Well, I'm uh, out of time. I hope that uh, you have been blessed by the time spent in God's Word. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope that you'll join me again tomorrow.